For about five hours on October 14, 2021, various stakeholders in the anti-corruption crusade, including religious leaders, businessmen, students, and the media, assembled in Port Harcourt to brainstorm on the strategies for a holistic fight against corruption under the title Amplifying Anti-Corruption, Messaging Through Interfaith and Traditional Engagement. At the event, which supported by John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation, participants X-rayed the Hydra-headed problem of corruption in Nigeria and also preferred solutions on a way forward. And if we are to fight corruption, I think there is need to break unnecessary religious sentiments. Lord. My role as a faith leader, um, I want to talk about cooperation. We want to fight yes. corruption Second. individually. Yes. Yes. We need yes. to hate it and also resist being corrupt. Uh, uh, discipline as a leader. Yeah. We need to be disciplined. Let our yes be our yes. Let our no be our no. The, the financial corruption, that's, that's what I'm looking at. And, and, and we started it wrongly. It's difficult to change at this stage. If we want to fight corruption as leaders or religious leaders, I think the best option that we have to start with is we should be able to differ ourselves from being in particular political parties. But some people need to be sincere, like as a Muslim, Plenty of people used to come and fetch water, different kind of people, Christian, Muslim, so... It was a unique event as Christians and Muslims sat under one roof to find solutions to the issue of corruption in Nigeria. So now I want to see how many of us have talked against those things that are negative and how many of us are actually, have actually encouraged people doing the right thing. Recently, I was reading on social media, and I saw it in most newspapers, that people who show that they have too much money, a lot of them have skeletons in their cupboard. For example, horse puppy. Yes. Now, on the issue of how many, how many messages we've uh, uh, gotten and how to spot it, as small as I am, I can't actually count the messages I've got on corruption. But the question is, how well do we make use of this? Because it's not about what you've heard, rather it's what I've heard. No idea. They let put them back how to how do you think we can change the situation? The situation. Because I discovered that in our society, our society has been structured in a way that those that don't have integrity, in as much as they have influence and what they are being inculcated into our system. Without accent, how they are. It's like an egg. Mm -hmm. right? like that. It is laid, the egg is laid in the home, oh. and that is the takeoff point. Yeah. If we miss that point, then we have missed it all. That egg is allowed to fertilize by religious organizations okay. and then given wings to fly by the society. Okay. So if we start from the home, we would have won the battle against all. Various issues were identified by the participants as being responsible for corruption in the country. The participants were unanimous in one thing. The family system is the proper place to start from, while the church and mosques, as well as the traditional institutions, have roles to play. At some point, the participants broke into two sessions where they had time to dissect the issue. At the end, they came up with their positions. Ironically, the two groups focused on the family, though from different perspectives. This is what the first group came up with. Free the family from corruption. Hashtag no to favoritism. And in our summary, we looked about the family being the bedrock or the center of the society. And the need to be cautioned against favoring one child above the other. Like, hence our topic is um, free the family from corruption and no to favoritism. We're looking at the family not favoring a particular child over the other. As this will give room to corruption. We have a lot of corruption in our society today and social vices. And we have looked at 
favoritism as the bedrock of this corruption we're talking about. And then, so the second parties have actually gone down very, very badly. And if we are to fight and win this battle against corruption, it has to start from the family. That's why we are saying restoring the family value system. Um, in those days when we were in primary schools, there used to be a subject, moral education. I cannot remember children of these days being taught moral education again. So we need to take that fight back to the schools. That's why we are saying part of our strategies is to collaborate with proprietors of schools so that we'll be able to have opportunities, platforms for talk shows, for debates, for drama. If proprietors of private schools, where all our children are, give us listening ears and allow us to partner with them, to collaborate with them, we'll be able to have that opportunity during assembly halls, during um, special sessions that can be organized, PTAs, we'll be able to talk to the children, talk to the teachers about family value system and how we can restore them in our, in our social life. And then, the event coordinator, Imam Shefu Abdul Karim Majemu, who is also a co-director of the initiative, took time to expatiate on the positions uh, the of the two title. groups. I think the idea is about a family rediscovering our family values. That is, because to me, we have values in Nigeria, in Africa, that alone can fight corruption, stand still, and kill it, finally. This is a fantastic aspect we are covering. And the two groups actually uh, are giving us something that is uh, worthwhile here. So, the strategies are very clear. At the beginning, Bishop Emma Gospel Isong, who is also a co-director of the Anti-Corruption Project, had given a synopsis of the program. The same thing we shall do in Kodakon. So please, feel free, open up. When we started this fight, we were not paid anything. Yeah. Me and him, I would. I used to go from Calabar, take business class ticket, reach, stay in a big five star hotel, and go back. Sometimes spend 300,000 on my own. The embassy never gave me Kobo. I never gained five naira. I didn't know they were watching us. And the same thing with him. I didn't know they were watching me. And they, they, one of them said to me, Don't you so? You come from Calabar? I said, yes, man. I come from Calabar. Because I, I said, How do you man? I said, I pay my hotel, I pay my ticket. I was just interested in how my country will live well, how this country will be fine. I was not interested in money. Some of our colleagues, when they arrive, they say, oh boy, they're not going to pay us something today. This American people, they get money. Those people, they never pick their names. Because these guys, they have eyes. They didn't pick their names. They've been asking me today, how oh, are you and Imam are still running this? Thing? I said, we're still running. <laughs> how are you people cope? I said, when we cope, when you guys run away. He later us. spoke to the Goshen TV crew on the journey so far. Corruption has not only hit us bad, corruption has become endemic and in, it has eaten into the fabrics of our economy and has become uh, one of the most challenges of Nigeria society. MacArthur Foundation is not only the sponsor of this project, uh, they are also doing similar projects all over the world. They have been very magnanimous uh, with what is going on in Africa. And uh, I think good governance is part of the objectives. But this is a second phase of this project, promoting accountability and anti-corruption through behavioral changes and approaches. His colleague also spoke to the Goshen TV yeah, my crew. My name is Imam Shafi Abdul Karim Majemu. I'm the co-project director on the, this project. There's a Makato project on promoting accountability and uh, anti-corruption messaging um, through um, beverage change and uh, there's a project for three years and um, we have been working together uh, for the past um, this is the fourth year with the bishop on this project and uh, we are honored uh, to actually continue with this project it's really a worthwhile venture uh, project for us because it is uh, one of our dreams uh, to be part of the change that Nigeria needs at this present uh, cr and critical time. Thank you. Some of the participants have this to say. Wow. Okay. 
Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 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 I'll take it further. Go home. I'm thinking of the church itself. It's the church that sent me. And so I'll go straight to the church, speak to the church about this activity. And then we would uh, establish it, particularly amongst our children. Um, my name is Asalemi Mariam Ibrahim, uh, student of River State University, studying mass communication. Actually, it's not really far from what I've been taught at home. But the truth be told, I guess that been like more light has been thrown to so many things that the society is going through now that we have to correct. So I can say it was really enlightening. Hmm. Firstly, I think I need to start checking those people that live around me. <laughs> like I really need to start um, um, paying more attention to how people behave, and you know try my best. As I said, change begins with you to correct some certain things that people think and do. Yeah. My name is Nancy Usani Usman. I'm the secretary of Jewish Jamal Tuzal to video welcome to Suna River State. Very, very fantastic. I enjoy it so much. And it is one of which can I ever participate in, in my life. And it's very educative and enlightening. It was not all talk and talk. They also had some time for some refreshments. The participants left the Marriott Hotel venue of the seminar fired up for action and it's expected that in the days ahead every little corner of the country will begin to feel the impact of the five-hour deliberation in Port Harcourt.